Welcome to Spine Academy. In this surgical technique video, we're going to talk about my technique for placing thoracic pedicle screws. Now, there are a lot of different clinical scenarios in which pedicle screws are placed in the thoracic spine. The most common of them are really for degenerative conditions. I would say that I principally uh, put thoracic pedicle screws in the setting of cervical thoracic constructs. So upper thoracic pedicle screws are probably the most common screws that I put in. Uh, and we'll talk about that and show that in a cadaver model today. But of course, they could be put in at the bottom of a cervical thoracic construct. They could be put in at the top of a thoracolumbar construct. Or of course, you can have pathology in the thoracic spine itself. Things like tumors or trauma, infection cases, things like that. And so recognizing the application and having different techniques for, for putting it in, I think is very valuable uh, when you're applying thoracic pedicle screws. To do that well, I like to kind of frame it as like, here's the considerations and give you a sense of like the different landmarks that you might use. Having said that, a lot of people put thoracic pedicle screws in using different technology. One thing that I like to do, I like to put them in freehand. That's my technique for doing them. It's not to say that you can't use other technologies, but that's the way I prefer to do them in the typical case. Some people will use fluoroscopy and do a fluoro-guided uh, placement of pedicle screws, and that's totally reasonable. Figuring out how to do that with a good workflow, I think, is important to make it efficient and safe. Certainly, navigation and robots can be very useful for placing thoracic pedicle screws. And I do use a navigation system or a robotic system when I'm putting them in in people with dysplastic pedicles or maybe revision cases or bad deformities or things like that that are more extenuating circumstances, I'd say. So that's a useful technology to, to use to place thoracic pedicle screws safely as well. And then lastly, some people will do a laminotomy and actually feel the boundaries of the pedicle and then place the pedicle screw directly while you're feeling it. And that's a safe way to do it for sure. Certainly a little bit less efficient, but very safe and efficient effective technique for putting it in. Now, the landmarks that people use, this is one of the things I thought was very interesting when I was a resident and a fellow, is every surgeon that I worked with had a different way of putting these in. And it can sometimes feel a little bit like inconsistent and like confusing. So we'll talk about all the different landmarks that you see, but I definitely remember people taking off the joints above and seeing the SAP and making sure that you could find the joint clearly. That was a landmark people used. I tend to use the pars and the ridge that you see at the medial aspect of the transverse process. Those are the landmarks I'll talk about today in this video. And certainly I've had people who just bite off the medial edge of the transverse process and go for the blush. It's also a reasonable way of doing it. But I'd like to be a little bit more structured in presenting the landmarks and how I use them today so that you can feel very facile with putting in thoracic pedicle, pedicle screws, whatever the application. I tend to use, from an instrument standpoint, a gear shift, and specifically a lanky probe, which I think is uh, what many people call it. Uh, you can use a Steffi probe, you can also use a drill, you can use a, a straight curette, and I have a few colleagues that use a 3.0 straight curette. One of the things that's neat about thoracic pedicle screw cannulation is that there are so many ways of doing it, there's no right or wrong way to do it. But I think feeling familiar with not only the anatomy in all dimensions, but also developing a good way or a technique that you have, a workflow that you have for placing it safely, is I think imperative to be able to put them in in a comfortable way efficiently, safely, and accurately. So that's what I hope to show you in this video to come. So let's talk first about thoracic vertebral body anatomy. If you imagine this animation here, kind of spinning around and understanding the adjacent structures, here's the skull, here's the cervical spine, and this really highlights the upper thoracic vertebral bodies. This is T1 here, this is T2, and this is what you're looking at from the back. In this video, I'm gonna show how I put thoracic pedicle screws into T1 and T2, or upper thoracic pedicle screws. But of course, the same principles apply no matter where in the thoracic spine you're applying them. If you imagine looking at the same image, kind of rolling it to the side, you'll see the pedicle a little bit more clearly. This is the structure that we're trying to place a screw into. So this is the T1 level, this is the T2 level. Of course, here's the thoracic pedicle. Here's the second thoracic pedicle over there for T2. This is the structure we're trying to put screws in, but of course you can't actually see it, this view when you're looking at it from the back, barring the use of fluoroscopy or navigation, which is why sometimes people use those techniques. What you actually see when you're placing these is this view. So this is a view that's familiar to you if you've ever tried placing thoracic pedicle screws. Here you can see the back of the spine, you can see the spinous process. Here's the bottom of the lamina, the joint here between T1 and T2. And there's some important landmarks. Here's the transverse process, 
that's kind of unique in its geometry and its shape in the setting of the thoracic spine and the pars right here. So this is the pars of T1. I tend to use the pars as an important landmark. The joint is an important landmark. And there's a ridge that you can't see so well on this animation, but you'll be able to see better in a cadaver setting. So these landmarks are the landmarks that are important for placing the thoracic pedicle screws. And the pedicle itself I showed from the lateral view, you have to imagine it's in this space right here. And how to cannulate that safely and effectively and accurately is the purpose of this video. So let's start with first understanding the thoracic pedicle architecture and some of the options for placing pedicle screws. So I like to draw this axial view of the thoracic pedicle. So if you imagine the thoracic vertebral body, the transverse process, the spinous process, and the canal right here, this gives you a sense of what the thoracic pedicle itself looks like. So you could imagine again on the outside of this that you might have a rib that kind of comes around like this. There's the head of the rib articulating with the outside of the transverse process. Now, if you imagine looking at this pedicle itself then, there's a few trajectories that are considerations and certainly a, a good options. There's the, the trajectory that goes right down the long axis of the pedicle, and that's usually a great trajectory that you could use. But you could also imagine picking a bit more of a medial start point and putting one that goes in a little more straight so not necessarily with the degree of medialization. You could pick a very lateral to medial start point and get a trajectory that goes like that, that kind of goes straight through that. Now notice all of these go right down the center of the pedicle and they're all acceptable, right? One of these is a very lateral to medial start point. One of these is a trajectory that's quite, kind of somewhere in between and then one's quite straight. The start points for all of these are different, right? Here's quite a medial start point over here, one in between, and then a very lateral start point there. And I think what I mean to really illustrate with this is the fact that there's kind of a range of acceptable start points and a range of acceptable trajectories on the axial plane. Similarly, if you were to look at it on a lateral view, one interesting thing about the thoracic pedicles is that the long axis of the pedicle in this dimension is not necessarily parallel to the top of the end plate. And here you can see, this is what gives rise kind of to the idea of the anatomic trajectory, which is a trajectory that runs right down the long axis of the pedicle. This is interesting only because, you know, when you're putting in these pedicle screws, there's kind of a range here too. Often people will put in screws that are a little bit more like this or really parallel to it here where I didn't quite show the anatomy in the back here accurately, but you could be anywhere from parallel to the end plate to like an anatomic down the long axis of it. And that is kind of the range that's available to you on the sagittal plane. So understanding that putting in thoracic pedicle screws, there's some variability in it, I think helps inform the fact that when you're picking landmarks, you wanna pick them relative to the application. So for example, when you have a very medial start point, what I do when I'm putting in cervical uh, lateral mass screws and then going down to the thoracic spine for a cervical thoracic construct, all of my lateral mass screws will be a little bit more medial, so I'll pick a little bit more of a medial start point so that they're collinear with the cervical lateral mass screws. Conversely, if I'm going down to the lumbar spine where the pedicles tend to be quite lateral to medial because you're staying outside of the superior trachea process, I'll pick a start point that's a little more lateral so that it remains collinear. So for me, one of the real drivers for how medial or lateral I go has to do with the position of the adjacent screws. There's often like these transitions, whether it's cervical thoracic or thoracolumbar, where you have to cross across across different morphologies, a thoracic morphology compared to a lumbar morphology, and that is a big driver of where I make my start point, both in terms of lateral to medial, and to some extent even craniocaudal with respect to the anatomic versus the straight ahead trajectory. Now, if you leave out alignment and think what are the other advantages of a straight versus a lateral to medial trajectory, there's a few other things that I think are valuable. When you have trajectories that are very steep lateral to medial, so for example, you pick this kind of lateral most start point, it gives you some strength from triangulation. If you have a screw on one side and a screw on the other side and think about it as a construct, that medialization gives you some triangulation strength and that's kind of an important value. Conversely, if you put your screws in kind of starting right in the middle and they're going in a little more straight, now to be honest, very rarely are they going in truly straight, but if they're going a little more straight, you kind of lose some of that. But why would you ever put screws in that are kind of a very medial start point? There, you think about a construct, and when screws are very medial, they tend to line up in a, if you're looking at it from the back, they tend to line up kind of collinearly in this dimension. But if you use like a very lateral to medial start point dictated by the pars, then a T1, it might be quite wide, and a two, and you get down to six or even 12, and it kind of does one of these things when you look at it from the back. So it'll be very wide apart at the top, kind of narrower in the middle, and that is something that can be a little bit annoying if you're trying to fix a deformity if the heads are not necessarily lining up 
that way. So I tend to kind of pick something in between. The principal driver for me ends up being that I want the tulips of these screws to line up. And that kind of brings me to one last important point with this, which is that if you have a screw that goes very steep from lateral to medial, so let's pick this trajectory right here, you know, the screw helix itself might be along this trajectory. So maybe it looks like this and you've got the helix itself and here's this. The tulip will be a little bit lateral to the start point in bone. And that is because as it's quite lateral, there's a bit of dimension to it. So the tulip where it is, if you're looking at it from the back, tends to be a little bit lateral to the start point as a function of how lateral to medial the screw itself is. And that is something that I just wanted to point out in this illustration because I will show that when we're working in a cadaver as well. So there's really two other things that I want to really illustrate here. So I'm going to start over and draw a thoracic vertebral body one more time and kind of show a couple of things that are important. If you imagine this being the pedicle right here, so let's say this is the T1 level, for example, and this is the pedicle, and the pedicle screwed right down the long axis of the pedicle. So again, the boundary of the pedicle is like this. This is we're picking that trajectory that is somewhere in between. So here what I'm really trying to show is the fact that this is the long axis of the pedicle. And imagine then that you plot that against the mid-sagittal plane and you identify this angle right here and we'll call that theta. That is an important angle to understand. In other words, what is that? That is the medialization of your pedicle screw or the medialization of the pedicle itself, recognizing that you, if you start a little more lateral, you can medialize more. If you start a little more medial, you can not medialize as much. But let's just look at the long axis of the pedicle. And this is an interesting um, graph when you look at it. And I'm just gonna talk about thoracic down to sacral. If you plot theta on this side, and then you, let's say, look at T1 here, and you plot it all the way down to S1. And I'm leaving out the cervical ones because it's kind of outside the uh, scope of this to talk about cervical pedicle screws. But if we just look at T1 to S1, which is where we put the bulk of our pedicle screws in, and plot theta, it's kind of interesting. It looks a bit like this. So that by the time you get to S1, it's quite steep. Maybe S1's a little bit over here, but this is, this is S1 over here, and then this is T1 over there. So if you look at that, what does this really mean? This really means that at T1, it's quite steep lateral to medial. And as you drop down here, as you go to T2, and maybe this is T2 here, and this is, this is T3 here, and you kind of work your way all the way down. What's interesting is that the bottom here, this level right there, and sometimes it is actually negative, is T12. So the straightest pedicle that you have when you go from lateral to medial is really T12, and that is an important principle. So let's take a second again and just think about what we're saying in this graph. What we are talking about is the degree of medialization of a pedicle. We're looking at it across levels, recognizing there is no absolute 15 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, but what you do know is that if, there are, if T1 is medialized, medialized, let's say 20 degrees, that T2 is a little bit less, T3 is a little bit less until you get down to T12. And T12 is almost straight, sometimes even a little bit medial to lateral, believe it or not. And then as you go down from T12, you start getting more and more medialized again, so that by the time you get down to S1, it's very steep lateral to medial. So recognizing that orientation, thoracic, all the way down to 12, and then back out again to S1 is really valuable, and that is what this graph is meant to denote. Now, one thing I had wanted to mention is this architecture, recognizing that while there's no absolute degree of medialization for a screw, you wanna make sure that if you're going down the thoracic spine that you're getting a little less medial, a little less medial as you go down, and that is really valuable. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is that this range that I had mentioned where you can really put a pedicle screw in down the long axis, you can put a pedicle screw in that goes really steep lateral to medial or one that's kind of straight, like that option is something that's very powerful if you have a big pedicle. But if you were to draw the same vertebral body on this side and this time it looks like this and let's say you have a small pedicle and you have the rib that looks like this, what you'll notice is that this position doesn't necessarily change. In other words, where the canal is, when a pedicle gets small, it's getting small with its lateral wall here. And what you're really doing is you're limiting your ability to kind of get a very lateral to medial start point. Sometimes when people do this, that's when you get these so-called in out in, where you start in bone, you go out and you come back into bone out here. That's when your pedicle looks very small like that. So it's one thing I wanted to point out is kind of the architecture and the differences that it really makes.
Now let's talk about the landmarks that I use when I'm placing thoracic pedicle screws. And again, as I had mentioned before, there are a variety of different landmarks people will use. So I'm really trying to illustrate the relative anatomy compared to where the pedicle and where you'll find the pedicle. So let's start with this view from the back here. This is again, the first thoracic vertebral body or T1. This is looking at it from the back. Here's T2 over here. Now, if you look at this, there are a couple of landmarks that are important. One of the important landmarks is looking at the joint. So here you can see the width of the joint here. This is the superior articular process that's kind of just out of view. It's tucked in behind the inferior articular process there, but you have a sense of what the width of the joint itself looks like. Now, if you pick the midpoint of the joint, so that space right there and divide it in half, so you're looking at the midpoint of it, it gives you this line over here. Some people use that as an indicator for where to start their pedicle screw. And I think that that is a very valid and important landmark to look at. But that's not the only position that you can place a pedicle screw. The other way of doing it is to look at this structure here. So this is the transverse process there. Here you can find the pars. You can see me just outlining the pars right there of T1. And it's important when you're trying to put a pedicle screw in here to look at the pars of the same level. So for example, if you're doing it at T2, you're not looking at this pars up here of T1, you're looking at the pars of T2 over here where it meets the TP. This is the pars of T2 over here and extrapolating it up. So the width of the pars is another important landmark. And if you look at this line and extrapolate it all the way up here, it gives you a sense of width. Now, one interesting thing about the thoracic pedicle screws is that this is the range that you have available to you when you're putting a pedicle screw in. So now if you imagine you can put a pedicle screw all the way here, kind of splitting. So again, where is that? That's at the midpoint of the joint. I always put it at the ridge, which you can't necessarily see so well on this. You could see it kind of down at this level. You can see it over here. There's this level, but in this animation, it doesn't necessarily show it so well. But in a cadaver model, you'll see it pretty clearly. I typically will start it in terms of medial lateral, somewhere in this window over here. And in terms of craniocaudal, usually right along the ridge. I find that to be a very valuable landmark, usually very safe and quite effective in my hands. So this is about the most medial that you can make your screw, midpoint of the joint. But you could also also come all the way out here and you could put your pedicle start point all the way out so that the lateral border of your start point is tangent to this line which comes up from the pars. You could go even a little for, farther, further lateral. I tend not to do that. I tend to think of this as being the range that's available to you from medial to lateral when you're putting in the pedicle screw. Now we'll talk a little bit about what that means on the axial plane as well, but this range is kind of important to understand. So if you imagine drawing out, once again, a thoracic vertebral body, this is looking at it in axial section here, and now we're looking at the pedicle itself over here. So imagine that you've got a trajectory that this is the long axis of the pedicle there. When you take a start point like this, this, is, this translates right here. This is a very medial start point. This translates to this spot right there. If you were to go very lateral, kind of lateral to medial, this translates to a start point that's all the way out there. So this range from here to here corresponds to this range that we're talking about right here. Now, in these drawings and these illustrations and animations and stuff, it looks like quite a large distance. But if you think about it, this distance here is probably no greater than five or six millimeters. And you'll see that in the cadaver model. And usually I'll use a three millimeter drill bit to make my start point. So even though we're kind of beating this up, these are more like principles. If you're gonna cheat medial, then don't medialize your screw so much because you're not necessarily gonna need to based on where you're starting. If you're starting more lateral, then medialize a little bit more to make up for that. And that I think is gonna be important when we're kind of picking our start points. So if you were to imagine this space again and say this is our range, the way that I use that in a cervical thoracic setting, for example, is that I might look up and say like, this is a good start point for my C6 lateral mass screw, for example. So let's say that was my start point and I put my lateral mass screw in. The tulip is gonna be a little bit medial and a little bit caudal to that, right? Because the screw is directed up and out so the tulip ends up cheating a little bit medial and a little bit caudal to that. So let's say this is where the tulip actually ends up sitting when I'm done putting my C6 pedicle screw in. I could drop a line right down from there, like the rod is gonna come down from that, right? And I could look at it where it intersects this line here and say, oh yeah, that's in bounds, right? That's somewhere between here and here. But I know if I put my thoracic pedicle screw in, my head is gonna be a little bit lateral to it. So I will tend to cheat just a little bit medial to that. 
So this is how I would derive my start point for a T1 pedicle screw. I would say like, this is my bounds. These are the, this is the range. I'm kind of halfway in between the most medial I can be and the most lateral I can be. And I know then that I'm in this trajectory that's kind of like right down the long axis of it. It's kind of interesting, right? I pick this point that's just a little bit medial to what would be collinear, knowing that my tulip is just gonna be a little bit lateral. And that is how I land on an appropriate start point for my thoracic pedicle screw. So now that we've talked about the landmarks we use to identify an appropriate start point, let's look at this in a cadaver model. So here you can look at the back of the cervical spine. Again, here you can see the lateral mass screws that are in place from a different cadaver uh, video that I did on lateral mass screws. Uh, and you can see here the, the T1, here's C7, we've skipped it, here's T1 and here's T2. So let's look at the landmarks themselves. You can see here with the Penfield 4, you can identify the lateral border of the pars of T1 and again T2. This is looking at the width of the joint here, so you can see the full width of the joint. Midpoint is about here, and there is the range of where you could put your screw in from a medial to lateral perspective. Similarly, here's looking at the pars, the full width of the joint, the midpoint of the joint, and again, this is the range that's available to you when you're putting your pedicle screw in in terms of medial to lateral distance. Now, again, as I had mentioned before, you can't necessarily see the ridge so well in this animation, but you can see it very clearly here. Here's the ridge that I was talking about. That's kind of that ridge that meets you from the top of the transverse process down there. Here's the ridge that you see over here. I, from a craniocaudal perspective, I generally make my start point right on the ridge. From a medial to lateral perspective, you can get a sense of where the midpoint of the joint is, where the pars is that you extrapolate it up, and this kind of five to six millimeter range that's available to you for a thoracic pedicle screw start point. So now that we have talked about the principles of putting in a thoracic pedicle screw, let's actually get into how we put this in in a cadaver model. So if you imagine looking at this cadaver over here and look at the screws that are above it, here's the cervical lateral mass screws. I pick my start points partly looking at the landmarks of the level. So here you can see a T1. I'm looking at the ridge right here. I'm looking at the lateral border of the pars. Same thing at T2 and I'm identifying my start points relative to those structures, but also in a way that's kind of collinear with these. And specifically, if I'm putting in screws in the cervical spine and I'm looking at the start point, you have some variability. I mean, I could start more lateral here. I could start a touch more medial than that. But how did I land on that? I looked at this line here. I picked a collinear. I ran it down here like if it was a rod and I went just a touch medial to that. And that is kind of a higher order principle because I know that the tulip is gonna be just a little bit lateral to that start point. But that is how I identify my start points in vivo. Now, I often in vivo will identify both start points and that is because I wanna make sure that they all align up. But in this cadaver model, I'm going to go through all the sequences doing both pedicles at the same time. I don't often do that. Maybe in a case where I'm very rushed, uh, you know, for trauma or instability or something else, I would uh, consider doing that. But for the most part, I'll put a full thoracic pedicle screw in. So gear shift, vaulted probe, tap, vaulted probe, screw, that sequence one screw at a time. Now, here's my start points again here, and if you imagine the next step is to come at this with a gear shift. So I will typically bring in a gear shift. I like to use a straight gear shift, and I'll cannulate the pedicle using just a freehand technique, feeling my way, medializing it according to the level in question and my start point, and then caudalizing it to make sure that uh, I'm kind of going in, ideally in as straight ahead technique as possible, understanding that on occasion it ends up being anatomic and that's okay. So I will cannulate all of T2, for example, and on the way out, I'll give it a full spin, 360 degrees. I try to go to a full depth of 30 millimeters for the pedicle, for most upper thoracic pedicle screws. And then the same thing at T1. I'll kind of gear shift, find my way down, very softly feeling through the way of the pedicle, making sure that I'm not necessarily feeling any discontinuities of force. I want to be smooth, uniform uh, um, amount of resistance that you expect when you're using a gear shift. So I tend to use a straight gear shift just because I think directing it is a little bit smoother. I, I'll go down again to a depth generally of 28 to 30 when I'm putting in a thoracic, upper thoracic pedicle screw. I will generally measure those on a CT scan before when I'm picking lengths, but for the most part, it ends up being a freehand thing. Like I'll feel my way down to 35 or 40 or something if I'm in the lower thoracic spine to kind of get my length. Now, let's take a second and talk about using a gear shift when you're cannulating a thoracic pedicle. 
there are two general types of gear shifts that are used. There's straight gear shifts, and those are the sharper ones, which are called lankies, or many people refer to them as lanky probes. There's also some blunt ones called Steffi probes. I tend to use a lanky probe. I like it more in terms of uh, its geometry and its sharpness at the tip. Um, I tend to use a straight lanky, but not everybody does that. There's some value to using a curved lanky as well. So let's talk a little bit about the proper use of those or some of the principles of using a curved versus a straight gear shift. So if you imagine a thoracic pedicle, this is looking again at the pedicle, let's say an upper thoracic pedicle. When you're going down the pedicle, let's say you wanna get a long axis like this, you're gonna to try to do this with it. When you're using a curved lanky, it tends to have a bit of a bevel to it. So in general, like you can look at a straight lanky will be in cross section. I'm gonna exaggerate a little bit, but it'll almost be rectangular in cross section and then there'll be a shaft of it here. But a curved lanky will have a bit of a bevel on it and it will look a bit more like this. And then again, there'll be a shaft on it here. And this curve in it is why we refer to it as a curved lanky. Now, when you, I, I tend to use a straight lanky and feel my way right down the center, but some people like to use a curved lanky. And let me talk a little bit about how that is done. When you're putting in your curved lanky, let's assume that this full depth is about 30. You can imagine a depth of about 15 to 20 is gonna get you to about there. So when you start putting your lanky in, you start with the curve and the bevel, so to speak, the convex surface of it ends up being medial. So you put this in and imagine that this is the convex surface of it. That is going to be directed medially. And that's because you want this surface to brush off the cortical margin of the pedicle. So what you don't do, generally when you put this in, is you'll actually exert a bit more medialization to feel it kind of almost like come off the surface here. So you'll medialize it a bit more with the bevel medial. That's counterintuitive because in the very superficial portion of the thoracic pedicle, you generally don't over medialize stuff. But with a curved lanky, that's how you you start it, you get to a depth of about 15 to 20, most people say 20, and then remove it and then switch the bevel so that the bevel is directed, the convexity is directed laterally for the ventral portion of it. So here, when you put this in, you don't necessarily medialize it aggressively. There, you put it in more or less straight and hope that the bevel bounce off of the lateral edge of the vertebral body. That is the technique for putting in a, a thoracic, cannulating a pedicle using a curved lanky. The first 20 millimeters or so, you have the bevel, which is to say the convex surface, not the point, the convex per, uh, surface pointed medially, then you remove it, you turn it around, you feed it back in softly to a depth of 20 again, and then to get the rest of the distance. And the rest of the distance is done without much medialization to it as a general rule. Um, that's what I use when I'm doing, that's how I do it when I'm doing a very small pedicle. I'll tend to do this technique because I feel like it's easier to bounce off that medial edge of the pedicle. Unlike that, when you're doing a, let's see what you're, you were to wrap this up and look at the other pedicle. If you come around to the other side here and, and look at the pedicle over there, you're putting in a screw over here it is something that if you're putting in a straight gear shift, I tend to just kind of run it down the center here. And this is something that, you know, your straight gear shift will end up kind of redirecting you. But I tend to put it in kind of lightly using some anisotropic principles of kind of thinking the path of least resistance is usually down the center. That is something I wanted to get into uh, right at the outset because it's kind of a, a valuable lesson to learn at this point. How do you use a curved versus a straight lanky when you're putting, when you're cannulating a thoracic pedicle? So now after using a gear shift to cannulate the pedicle, uh, we typically will come in with the Baltic probe and that is really to feel the margins. I tend to feel four walls and a floor. So that is like a rostral, caudal, medial, lateral, and then a floor. I'll check in this case, both of them um, uh, to make sure that I have all four walls and a floor. Now, when you use a gear shift, especially in a, uh, a small pedicle, you don't always have to tap, but I do tend to tap and I will undersize tap. So if I expect to put in a 5.5 screw, for example, or in this case, maybe a 5.0 screw, I will tend to tap with an undersized tap. Many people think like, what's the point of doing that? But the reason that I tend to use a tap is to center the pilot hole. Because again, I free headed my way through the pedicle. There's a chance that I'm eccentric within the pedicle. I'm a little on the lateral edge of the cancellous bone or the medial edge or higher or low. When I run a tap through, because you're not applying much in the way of forces, it tends to self-center. It will bounce off the cortical margin at whatever side it's close to. It tends to center the screw. And I like that technique and it only takes a second to do. So I will tend to use a tap as I show here. I'll tap them generally just to a depth of about 15 to 20 to kind of make sure that I've centered it within the pedicle. I don't think that the um, tapping into the vertebral body really is of any particular utility. So once I've tapped, I do check a vaulted probe, make sure that nothing has violated. I'll make sure that I have again, four walls and a floor. 
make sure that I'm comfortable with them. I usually feel ridges, that I don't feel anything soft. Here, just demonstrating that, you know, it's again collinear. These start points are just a little bit medial to where the, the tulips of the cervical lateral mass screws are. And then I come in with a, a thoracic pedicle screw. And generally, I'll put these thoracic screws in, again, distal. I put them in one at a time, but here you can see I'm putting in the T2 pedicle screw. Once that's in and has secure fixation, I'll kind of seat it until I feel a change in insertional torque. Then I go to the T1 screw and do the same thing. And as I'm applying it, I'm trying to kind of follow the margins. I'm not applying a lot of force. I'm really just spinning it. And that will allow the pedicle to kind of carry the screw into it. That's a very straightforward principle of any thoracic or, or lumbar pedicle screw. Let the pedicle pull the screw and don't necessarily try to steer it too aggressively um, uh, once you actually have it on the screwdriver and are putting it in. Once the screws are in, you can really see here how the just lining up the heads was an important kind of um, step to take at the beginning. Here you can kind of see that the lateral mass screws are over here and they line up and they look pretty good here. You can see that the thoracic pedicle screws, by putting a bit of thought into the start point, they really line up beautifully. And you can see here just with the alignment afterwards that everything looks like it's very much in alignment. And so that's kind of a higher order, kind of interesting um, thought to put into it, because again, you have some range of medial to lateral. Pick a start point that lines you up properly. And if that's in the cervical thoracic junction, go a little bit medial to kind of align with the lateral mass screws like you can see here. And if in the thoracolumbar junction, go a little lateral. I'll cheat closer to the lateral edge of the pars to kind of make sure that I'm bringing my head as lateral as I can in the thoracic spine while still safely cannulating the pedicle. So that is my technique for putting in thoracic pedicle screws. In this cadaver model, I showed upper thoracic screws at T1 and T2, but the same principle applies no matter what level of the thoracic spine you're doing. Think about an appropriate start point in terms of the, the range that you've got, medial and lateral. I generally started at the ridge to kind of make sure that I'm comfortable with cannulating the pedicle itself, and then gear shift, ball tip probe, tap, ball tip probe, and a screw. So in this video, we talked about my surgical technique for placing thoracic pedicle screws. We kind of went through some of the illustrations in the anatomy so you understand how you pick an appropriate start point. That's probably the hardest part is getting a good start point. If you get a good start point, cannulating the pedicle, placing the screw is quite straightforward. I talked about it generically with drawings, but then really showed it in a cadaver model in the upper thoracic spine with screws at T1 and T2. But the same principles apply at all levels in the thoracic spine. The things that I would really highlight is that it's a versatile technique. It is something that there are different ways of doing it, and finding a good way for you to do it is important. I just wanted to share with you my technique for doing it. Its applications are myriad, and sensitivity to the adjacent structures and alignment is one of the principal drivers that I use when I'm placing these screws. I hope you found this informative and look forward to seeing you in videos to come.